How exactly do we shoot under par? Many people think it depends entirely on the driver. Well, I'm gonna show you right now, it doesn't. I'm gonna give you some secret sauce on how I got under par using the same conservative strategy time after time, waiting for the stars to align. We're at Dumbarney, the newest links in Scotland, and probably the best manicured course I've seen so far on the trip. I manually watched six of my last eight rounds to find out where I'm going wrong. What I picked up is I'm leaving myself 175 to 200 yards from the rough, often enough that it's costing me a lot of shots. Why am I hitting it 175 to 200 yards from the hole in the rough though? So I did a further analysis and found that I'm hitting my three iron too often on par fours. In fact, 19 times, putting me at plus 17 for those 19 holes. I have to get in the fairway. My strategy depends on it. Goodbye three iron, goodbye three hybrid, hello one iron, hello six iron, four iron, driver, my best tee clubs. What a pure green. On the second hole, we are directly into the three club wind. A quick calculation tells me I need three shots of 160 yards each to reach this green in regulation. Now, in a three club wind, that's three five irons. I don't want to have a five iron from 160 yards for my final shot into a par five. That's not the way I roll. Okay, we got 218 to the front, into the breeze. I'm never going to hit anything there. So we're going to leave ourselves a pitch in. Let's see how far to get to the water. 177. So into the breeze, hit an eight iron. I definitely cannot reach the green with the wind in my face and with the burn running through the hole. All I need on the par fives is to lay up to a wedge shot for my third shot. So players, well, I caught that a bit thin. I changed my plan. I was going to draw it in, but then if I, I looked at the green and I saw this slopes all the way down here. So if I, if I hit it left of the pin, it's going to come back down this way. So I changed it on the shot to be like a, a fade. And luckily I, I kind of thinned it into that backstop and I used that backstop to come back down onto the green. So I'm happy with this. The third tee is quite high above the green and directly down breeze. There's a little speed slot over the bunker that I think I can hit down in the fairway that's going to shoot my ball forward right onto the green. I bring out the trusty one iron and ground and pound the devil out of the ball. Oh my god, go in the hole. <laughs> is it? Bro. Bro. No, don't say it. That's a f is it in? Oh, nearly, nearly. I've never started around three deep after three. Neither did Shields and BDS as a scramble on this very course. I bring out the big dog on the fourth tee and I'm not feeling comfortable with it. You can tell by the auto-corrected handsy swing and that slightly weaker poofies to the right ball flight. We're in play, but we're on totally the wrong side of the hole. Oh, that, that could be the deep stuff. Do you see it? Yeah. We've got 150 into the green, or into the hole. And then on this hole, Oh, it's very wide up there, so I guess the pin is on the right. So anywhere left of that pin is money. 150 into the breeze, we're going to take a 6 iron. And just go well left of the pin. Can I get a 6 on this from here? I really wanted to be on the left side of the hole to open the green up to give me a better analysis of the landing area. My spidey sensors told me the pin was on the far right of the green, so I figured I could put it way left and leave a long putt for a two putt pass key. The wind was coming off the right, so I thought, hey, it's perfect. But of course, I totally miscalculated. The pin was on the left side of the green. This is the reason I'm conservative on these new courses. I got that a bit wrong, players. You can see up on the right there, there's a whole bunch of green. So the pin is actually in the center. I made a bit of a miscalculation and I went to left when I should have probably gone a bit right of the pin. Maybe could have got lucky there. But it looks like it's pretty good around the green complexes here for some chipping and putting. Going way right would have been a better play, but I know for next time if I ever play here again. We're on a bit of a stony lie. Ooh, I don't know what this stuff is. Some kind of algae or bird shite. 
so I can either it's a very tight lie I don't think I can get a 56 nicely on that without fear of teething it so I'm going to just bump on into this slope over here I would putt it but I can't I've got to go through there Oh man, that's really not clever. No. These are brand new courses I've never seen before and I have to put myself in the highest percentage play to keep my scores down. With the driver, one hole I scored a birdie, one hole I scored a bogey. Does credit go to the driver for both or either one? Yeah, it's never gonna reach the bunkers. Got 145 playing 153 into the breeze. The pin's not moving because I think it's sheltered from the wind, but there's wind as soon as we get over these dunes here. My ball flight will touch the wind for a little bit. So I'm thinking 153, go at the pin, let the wind drift it to the right. I think that pin's on the back left. So we'll leave ourselves a putt with that. At the pin, try to turn it over. Now this is the shot I'm most proud of on the trip so far. I only have 150 yards, but the three club wind is gusting directly into my face off the ocean. The higher I go, the more distance I lose. The lower I go, the less the ball carries. If I fade it, I'll also be short. Luckily, a stray tee was under my shoe, so I had to reset. It helped me to take more time to fully commit to a big draw, like I'm hitting a big top spinner in tennis through the wind. I close my stance off just a little bit more. The club faces toward the pin, and I'm going to swing down my feet line, just giving it a little top spin feeling. That's a great little draw right through the wind. What a shot. You go over that bunker, you have got, oh, so got you have to. So go left, left bunkers. This video is brought to you by Swing Tweaks. If you download Swing Tweaks, you can upload a video down the line and front on of your swing on the golf course or on the driving range, provide them feedback on your game. All that information can be typed into the app. A PGA professional will assess your swing, assess the information you've given, and he'll get back to you with drills, feedback, information, techniques on how to improve what's going wrong. This is a much better way than self-diagnosis or trying to fix your swing on the golf course. If you know the root cause of what's happening, you know how to fix it in real time. Be sure to use my discount code PLAYERS for 20% off your first tweak. One tweak is only the cost of a sleeve of golf balls. For some people it's getting a little cold outside, they have to move indoors for golf. Why not work on your swing in the off season so when you hit the new season next year, March, April, bam, you've got a leg up on your competition. Try swing tweaks. Another secret to going under par is to learn and adapt to your environment, the grass, the conditions, the shots that you need. I club up to an 8 iron instead of the usual pitching wedge from this distance. I have to hit whichever club is going to get me to the hole. The wind is 90 degrees from the right, so it will eliminate a fade completely. I know if I don't think of anything on this little chip shot, it's going to push fade. That wind is going to eliminate that push fade, give me a dead straight shot, and because I've clubbed up, it's going to be a half swing, leaving the ball center of the green, two putts, get out of there with a par, like an absolute bounce. Wind off the right, it's going, to, it's going to push it a bit to the right, to the left, so it's going to break off the left in the beginning, and at the end, I think the wind's going to bring it back from the right. So I'm going to favor the left just a little bit, get the pace right, let's go. Into the wind may need to hit a bit firmer. Hey, bro, I nearly read. Got 
Could probably have hit my three iron further than that, but it should work. We've got 145, but we're into the breeze, so I'm going to hit probably a seven iron and try turn it over, no fader, straight at the pin. And I think we're going to be laughing there. I may not be able to putt this because it may be going too far along this stuff. Although this is very pure, I have to be very good at judging where to make it die and go down because it's still going to break from the top there. If I go in too early, it's going to just swing across the front of the hole. If I can, I have to judge it to get right to the fringe there and then die down. That's going to be a tricky putt because it's going to break here. So I'm going to have to go really high which means more time on this grass. I might have to just do a bump and run. Bump it on the slope there and let it, let it trickle down. I think that's better than what I, that's better than what I could do with a putter. Oh, other way. What I'm learning is that the wind's effect can change on the same hole from different shots. From the tee, I'm getting a little bit of help with the wind, but it's mainly off the right side. The hole dog legs to the right, and the approach shot is sort of into the wind, but mainly it's blowing from the right side. Listen to the explanation from the Savant. Okay, we've got 180 here, and I think with the wind the way it is, and the downslope de-lofting the club, I'm gonna hit it, wind 90 degrees off the right, I'm gonna just hit a normal seven, and just aim it way right, so in case I draw it, or pull it, and the wind brings it in too. Oh, it, it, I took a little bit less than I thought, but I thought it was gonna swing big. Now the length of this short par 4 is made even shorter by the wind coming off my 8. The wind direction is perfect because there's no bunk on the left side of the green but a few pot bunkers toward the right. If I beat the devil out of a 3 iron to the left rough bordering the green, the wind will push me back toward the green and I have a beautiful runway to roll the ball up. When the wind is with me, I must attack like hell. that's so bad. Go. Stop now. Stop, stop. So that went 220, 224 to about here. So we got 273 to 287 on the sprinkler head. That's nice. I haven't seen that in a while. And I think if I hit this to 94 here, this is short of that, short of that middle thing. It's such a wide fairway if we stay short of that. So that's from, that's 94 short of the green. And we've got like 280 so if i hit a ball like 180 yards on that line i think we're money you don't need to play tour level golf oh. to be a low handicap you can play hacker golf just like i play the key is to put yourself in high percentage situations, playing the odds, because some days you are the statue, other days you are the pigeon. Sometimes lightning strikes, but you've got to put yourself in the right position to be struck by the lightning. I don't care much about the greens in regulation as much as I care about puttable in regulation. That's the line. That's the line.
The course is routed so nicely, so every hole has a different wind direction. On the par 3, we're straight downwind, so I take a wedge from 165. But watch the divot. Yes, I missed the grooves on the face of the club, and I hit the toe where there are no grooves. But as they say in the classics, hit wedge from 165 for show, putt from 60 feet for dough. <laughs> what a read, baby! So I'm going over the left hand. I'm going to the left hand waste bunker because the pot bunk on the left is 340 away, and with the, the wind pushing us that way, pretty much open season anywhere from the right edge of the first bunker to the to left of that pot bunker. We've got like a we've, bro, we've got like an 80 yard fairway. I've mentioned that I'm playing the odds to get to scratch in Scotland. As we know, some days you're the pigeon, other days you're the statue. Today, all the things I've been learning and the ideas I've been creating have aligned with good putting and accurate tee balls to put me under par. I've become very confidential on the greens in Scotland. I believe it's a fescue grass, but I'm not sure. Whatever it is, it's quickly become my favorite grass to putt on. Putting myself in positions that lower my worst score means that if my putting and chipping are on fire, I will definitely go low. No, man. Great shot. Yeah, I think that uh, with this slow putting, wow. I'm going to have trouble if I putt that because I'm right on the dome. I was 100% committed, confidential and happy with the shot before hitting it and then just skanked a shuri to the right of the green. Luckily, I kept the inner monologue home fires burning. I slowed down, took my time and inspected my tricky pitch shot. My tee shot left the ball at the side of the big slope of the green. It's one of the worst places to be around the green because that completely rules out a bump and run or a putt because the green will snap the ball dead left off the slope. So I have to carry the big ass slope and land it on the flat platform. I have to pitch it with the open face sandy wedge I've been executing all day. Just stay in it, Matty Boom Boom. Be assertive and get those titties to the target. On 17, the tees will way forward and actually make the hole a lot trickier. I wanted to beat it on the green with a one iron, but I know as I get tired, the one iron starts to get a little toppy. So I hit a three iron toward the green side because I would make the hole much longer, hitting it to the left fairway. The tired push fade makes an appearance and this is the reason my three iron has been my trouble club, losing me so many shots to par on the par four holes. In a spot of bother here, I don't know how I'm gonna fly this and hold the green. I think I'm gonna go well right of the pin, 52 degree from about 40 yards. Grip down and hit it. Hopefully it, hopefully it doesn't draw, but if it does, I'm okay. I just got lucky as hell on this pitch shot. It's from the shit, it's onto a raised green and I landed the ball at the crest of the slope on the green. It was 50-50 when it landed, but it trickled forward. If I was a foot shorter, I'd be chipping back up onto the tabletop green from way below the green. That bit of luck saved me a shot easy peasy. Now I was tempted to hit a driver on the final tee because I'm not sure about the one iron when I get tired. But all I could imagine was a snap hook driver into Neverland. So I topped the one iron instead and luckily it runs like hell so I have a shot remaining. At the end of the day, with the smell of the beer hitting me from the clubhouse, I struck one right in the middle of the panty with my three iron, right onto the front edge of the green. And I love to play for an audience, but as I came into the view of the clubhouse, I realized no one was watching. I knew I just needed to trust the putter as usual, and I walk off with a legendary golf score. But of course, I got one shot ahead of myself, and I hit the putt way out of the hill with a little drop kick on top of it. Just a small thing like this can hold me back from the imaginary master's jacket or claret jug. Now I still have a shot at the par but I shaved the hole like a proctologist assistant. 
and I'm still surprised to add the score up for a beautiful 69er. The most amazing thing about this round is that yesterday I shot 84 at Panmure for a differential of 10.6 using the same strategy in the same amount of wind. 